Hey everyone, welcome back to chapter 15.7. And now we're going to talk about spherical coordinates. But before we do that, let's just talk about this equation of a sphere um, real quick. So I know this is a little bit of theory, that, uh, but I feel like it, it, it's otherwise, you know, spherical coordinates, um, they're going to be very hard to explain. Um, so what is an equation of a sphere? It's really x squared plus y squared plus z squared is equal to right, some radius squared. And what is then uh, the equation? Of, okay, so that's the equation of the sphere, right? And, you know, it's really tempting to write the equation of the sphere in terms of uh, cylindrical coordinates, because we have x squared and we have y squared, right? And there's there's really no, uh, no wrong way to do this. Actually, let's not call that r, let's call this a squared. Um, it's not wrong because, right, this becomes r squared plus z squared is equal to a squared. And then you have z squared is equal to a squared minus r squared. And then z is going to be plus or minus root a squared minus r squared. And yeah, like, this is fine. Um, this can, this can easily, you can actually just easily integrate um, spherical, not, not easily, but you can integrate spherical coordinates, uh, where you can integrate spheres using cylindrical coordinates, right? There's nothing wrong with integrating spheres using a cylindrical coordinate. And when will you use this equation? So when will you use this? When do you use this? Um, you'll use it in a few scenarios. Uh, usually if you have like a cylinder uh, and a sphere, you might use this. Uh, so if you have to find like a volume of a cylinder and a sphere, or if you use, uh, let's say, a cone and a sphere, uh, you might use this as well. And I might make a separate video talking about cones because they're a very special case where either um, uh, spherical or cylindrical coordinates uh, are going to, you know, work really well. But in, in any case, um, this is what we got, right? So we can use cylinders and spheres, or we can use cones and spheres. So uh, this is what we use this guy, right? So this is uh, equation of a sphere in cylindrical coordinates. All right. And now, uh, what, what then, what do we want to do? Uh, oh boy, that was bad. Uh, so now I want to talk about uh, spherical coordinates, right? And this and, and spherical chords are really confusing to talk about because, um, first of all, what is the conversion then from uh, Cartesian to spherical coordinates? So uh, if you want spherical coordinates, then x has to equal rho sine phi cosine theta. y is equal to rho sine phi sine theta. And then z is equal to rho cosine phi. And so this triple integral of dv, when you convert it to, uh, so triple integral of dv, remember dv, if we say it's dx, dy, dz, or something along the lines of that, right, dy, dz, dx, dz, dy, dx, doesn't matter. Um, when you convert to spherical, we write it as rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, okay? And so uh, get used to this. This is a really messy conversion compared to cylindrical, coordin uh, cylindrical coordinates. Um, spherical coordinates are much more messy than cylindrical coordinates. So, uh, <clears throat> okay, so now we have that aside. Uh, now let's talk about uh, a special case, right? So I didn't really talk about cylindrical coordinates too much in detail and the theory behind them because, you know, it makes sense. You guys know what polar is, right? You guys know what polar coordinates are, and then you just scale um, this guy, right? So imagine you have, I guess, let's draw in three dimensions, right? If that's x, y, and z, right? If you have like a circle, right? You can find the circle using polar coordinates, and then you just scale this guy up and down um, or down uh, by the z value, right? So essentially, uh, cylindrical is going to be uh, polar coordinates in three dimensions. Um, with an additional z value. So 
I didn't talk about that too much, but cylindrical coordinates are a little different. Um, they're a little counterintuitive. Um, not counterintuitive, but maybe not as intuitive as you originally thought they would be. So let's say I had the sphere right uh, here, and let's say the radius was, uh, let's say the radius is, let's give it a random number, a uh, seven. Okay, so how, how would I write the volume of this guy? What is the volume, right? How do I set up an integral for a sphere of radius seven? Rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, okay? Um, because again, this is dv, so integrating this will be the volume, and so now I just have to set up the bounds, right? What are the bounds? Okay, so what is rho? Rho is r, that's what it is. It's the, going to be the distance from the origin. So rho is going to be the distance from the origin, okay? So this right here, that's rho, all right? Um, what is theta? Let's, let's skip phi for now, what is theta? Theta is going to be your good friend um, in the xy plane. So here's the xy plane, right? And so uh, it's still gonna be this angle in the xy plane. And uh, it looks a little weird, but it's, it's still theta because x is coming out of the board, uh, out of the page, and that's what you have to think. So yeah, um, yeah, so uh, that's what theta is. Theta is still in the xy plane, that's cool. But what is phi? What is phi? And phi is really weird. Phi is the angle between the z-axis and the y-axis, right? It's the angle between z and the y-axis. And this is what messes kids up because, all right, um, rho is fine, right? Rho is, rho makes sense. Rho, uh, if I wanted to integrate the volume of the sphere, uh, since the, the radius is seven, right? It makes sense then if rho went from zero to seven. Right? Everyone's fine with that to find the volume of the sphere. Okay? And theta, right? Theta, if I go around here, right, if I go around in the xy plane, two pi degrees, right, or, or all the way around, I, I'll go from zero to two pi in theta. Okay? But now, phi. What is phi? What is um, phi going to be? So phi, look, phi, right, covers this angle right here, right? It covers the angle. Um, from the z-axis to the y-axis. What if I let phi go from zero to two pi? If I let phi go from zero to two pi, there's a problem because I'm essentially going from zero to two pi and then I'm being rotated around again, which means I'm double counting the volume of my region. So phi actually cannot go from zero to two pi, but instead, if I can undo this enough times to get rid of my purple, phi only goes from zero to pi, right? And here is a zero to pi. And again, why? It's because you take this part, right? You take this purple guy, and then you rotate that purple guy by two pi degrees. So for a sphere, um, the upper bound on phi is gonna be pi. And so this is, again, counterintuitive, uh, not counterintuitive, but not intuitive as you think, because you would want to say two pi, but that's wrong. So if theta goes from zero to two pi, then phi can only go from zero to pi, and then um, this would be uh, the integral for um, a sphere of volume uh, of radius seven. Right. Okay, that makes sense. So now uh, let's jump into then uh, a problem and. Uh, let's say I want uh, 15, uh, 15, what, 15, 7, 33. This is what this is, okay? I want the solid between the sphere rho equals cosine phi uh, and the hemisphere and the hemisphere uh, rho is equal to 2 and z is greater than or equal to zero. All right, so how do we do this, right? So the volume, again, is some triple integral. I got rho squared, oh wow. <laughs> rho squared sine phi d rho d phi d theta, okay? And then, um, and, and now what? So now we gotta set uh, what our uh, bounds are. So it's between um, this sphere 
rho equals cosine phi and the hemisphere rho equals 2, well, what is the biggest value cosine phi can get to? Right? The biggest value cosine phi can obtain, this guy can obtain, is 1. So I know that cosine phi is going to be smaller than 2 always. And since my inside integral is rho, I know that then, okay, then cosine phi, right, rho equals cosine phi goes in the, bo uh, the lower bound, and rho equals 2 goes on the upper bound. Okay, so we're doing this again. So that's cool. What is d phi and what is d theta? So uh, d phi, all right, how do I tell what phi is going to be? You tell what phi, the angle phi is going to be from the z coordinates, right? Because if z is greater than zero, so let's go back to this picture up here, right? I'm at this picture here again. If z is greater than zero, that means I'm only, right, I'm only at this part of the plane. I'm only on this upper half of the plane, which means my, my uh, angle can only go from zero to here, right? Because I'm only in the upper half of the plane, assuming that, uh, you know, theta goes from zero to two pi, which there's nothing telling me that it isn't going from zero to two pi. So, right, so phi, that means we'll go from zero to pi over two, okay? And that's because z is greater than zero greater than or equal to zero, right? So I'm only above um, the xy plane, so I'm only in the positive region, which is up here, and so my angle can only go from zero to pi over two. And then, uh, what's the angle for theta? Well, uh, theta really doesn't really get cut off by anything. Um, the only thing theta can get cut off by are the x and y's, right? Because again, where is theta? Theta is in the xy plane, right? And so theta, so phi depends on z, and theta depends on x and y. And we see no equations for theta here, right? There's nothing here that has uh, x's or y's in them. So theta just roams freely then from 0 to 2 pi. And then z, um, this restricts this guy to being 2 pi over 2. So, so hopefully this is more of a theoretical video and a really quick example um, of spherical coordinates. Uh, so in the next video, I am going to make another one on this section. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, cones and why cones are such a big deal is because uh, you can essentially uh, do it in uh, cylindrical or spherical coordinates. And so, yeah, uh, I'll see you guys in that next video.